morning, everyone. I want to put out a video and, uh, to discuss what uh, was said last night on Cape Rose show. And I also want to show you a couple of other things that I think you might find interesting. The first thing is, I have to admit that I no longer think that K-Pro and Mike are part of the LLC. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what they might be a part of. I still have all kinds of theories, but based on what K-Pro said last night, I find it hard to believe she would be part of the LLC because she was indicating and actually looking at some of the things I said in her chat. And responding to it with similar responses to what I had. For example, um, she was reaching out to the LLC saying that she believes that if they don't provide any provenance, they're really going to have a difficult time trying to make any money out of this. Uh, she doesn't understand why they would do that. So I guess she's in agreement with me on that. And um, but just you know the way she was saying it, uh, if she was part of the LLC. It doesn't make sense that she would say the things that she said. So anyway, um, I, I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen on Friday. We'll see if this uh, auction happens. Somehow I have my doubts. I thought it was funny, and I was laughing when um, K-Pro said that uh, if there is no auction, she's going to freak out and uh, basically burn that mother down. You know? Anyway, I, I thought it was interesting that it, it surprised me because I was expecting they were going to do another video and push the uh, – auction but it, it seemed like the opposite to me you know she isn't denying that she thinks the auction's coming up but she's saying that she doesn't think there's going to be any provenance and then they were discussing the same things that i had brought up for example you need to show a transfer of ownership from forest fan to jack and then from jack to the lc that's the only way they're going to provide provenance so what i believe is going to happen is the same thing that happened with sitting bull's pipe if you go and look at that auction that happened uh, recently regarding Sitting Bull's Pipe, the auction company, which was not Heritage, uh, it was a different company in um, Ohio, but they put a big disclaimer up there basically saying that the authenticity could not be verified. They do mention that Boris Van worked along with um, an archaeologist named Ken Tankersley and they figured out that it was uh, Sitting Bull's pipe based on the patterns in the wood grain and so forth. So they provided that evidence that um, it was being backed up by Forrest Van and Ken Tankersley. But the auction company was not willing to claim that, yes, it is, in fact, uh, a pipe from Sitting Bull and which pipe it was. Um, and they put a disclaimer up to that effect. So obviously the, the real pipe would have sold probably for pretty close to a million dollars. Um, I believe they only got like 40 grand for it. Um, so provenance does matter. They weren't denying that that pipe belonged to Forrest Fan, of course. What they were denying is, did it come from Sitting Bull? You know? And that's kind of the same thing with this auction. Um, we're not necessarily going to deny that these coins and other items, because they're, because apparently, like we said, they are not going to be auctioning off the treasure chest itself, nor are they going to be auctioning off the dragon bracelet. And we know that the, the other bracelet, of course, Forrest Fenn got it back from Jack, and then now Shiloh has it. So we know that that's not part of it. So really, we have what's left in there, the jar, and, and um, we have no idea what's in there. They're not going to be able to make claims that something special is in there because it's misleading because that's a... Um, highest term what's special to one person might not necessarily be special to somebody else so basically like i said I'm, they're going to need to to provide some provenance in order to be able to get more than just the intrinsic value of the coins so i mean that's still a lot of money because intrinsically those coins the double eagles uh, are probably worth close to two thousand dollars a piece and there's 265 of them in there so right there, you know, you're, you're at least at a half a million dollars. Um, and so, so you got the gold dust left. You got the other things left. I think that without provenance, they're going to have a really difficult time to get a lot of money for it. They'll be lucky to, to break a million, in my opinion. So this might be a loss for them. Uh, but, and I guess that's why K Pro was saying that, that she hopes that they watch the video and they think about this before they make a move.
So the other interesting thing is I figured I would ask Capro another question. And that question is, why is Shiloh not manning up and coming out and releasing a statement from the family himself? Why is he going through a third party? It doesn't make any sense to me if they're trying to avoid controversy. So her, her, her answer to that, and of course, this is, this is her opinion. This, we don't know it to be fact, but it, I guess I could kind of agree with it. She is thinking that Shiloh doesn't want to say anything because it's up to the find. She is thinking that maybe we'll hear something from Shiloh after the auction goes live, but he's leaving it up to them, the LC and Jack or whoever to go ahead and move forward. He's not going to come out and give a statement now um, just to appease everybody. And he would kind of be stealing the thunder from the finder. So that's her explanation. I I, I don't know. I, I sort of don't, don't agree with it because I'm not just talking about the auction. I'm talking about over the past two years, every time an issue came up, uh, Shiloh could have quelled that issue by speaking directly to the public instead of using a third party. I think that he only exacerbated the problem by going through a third party. It's just my opinion. So anyway, we'll see what happens on uh, Friday. And I thought it was funny. I, I asked K Pro if this auction does not go live on Friday, and it turns out that she was wrong. Is she willing to box somebody on Greg, the Brutal Truth channel? And she and I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember exactly what she said, but she said, yeah, well, not only that, I'll box now. I'll box somebody now. So apparently they're really annoyed that, um, you know, we're getting close to the 11th and it might turn out that that, that they were lied to again uh, because they, they, they rush out to give you information, and then a lot of times it turned out to not be true. So anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. So one thing a, a little bit off topic I want to mention here is, and I've never said this to anybody before, I was going to do a video on it, but I thought that I wouldn't because I no longer believe what I believe then. But anyway, um, back in 2020, when um, my friends that live in Gillette, Wyoming, Justin and Michelle, we're working on the drone footage and they went on site to campsite number nine. We found something. It's nothing that was in the chest, but we found something that's very suspicious. And it was hidden kind of near the treasure chest. And this is a picture of it there. And, and I, I know what it is already. And um, they've opened it up. And I actually looked at the circuit board and stuff in there to see if it was modified. And I, there's an FCC uh, ID on there. Um, because you need to be approved to sell electronic devices. So I tracked that FCC number down. I find a circuit board and I looked at the circuit board and, you know, and I came to some conclusions. And that was when I decided not to discuss it. But I'm going to throw it out there anyway, because of things like Gandhi said that uh, some things were left behind. Um, this item was, was definitely left behind and it was there for years. It wasn't there for 10 years. And I can prove that. But it could have been there for up to, prior to the find, up to five years. All right. So if the chest was pulled or somebody found it in um, 2017, 2018, um, this could have been there. And it was odd that it was left there. So I'm not going to uh, involve that in this video. I'm kind of putting it out there as a teaser because I'm going to show you what it looks like on the inside. And I'm going to tell you what it is. <clears throat> I still don't know who put it there or why it was there. Um, it's odd. And interesting enough, this device still works. It's got its own built-in batteries, and it's also got circuitry on there that it could recharge itself through solar means. So it was out there, and it's in working condition. So um, I'll get to that in the future. This is just a, a picture, I guess, of Michelle's desk where she does crafting, and this is where Justin put it down. Um, you can see the tape measure there to see about what size this device is, but it was near the nook. And it's interesting, like I said, because I started to wonder how would Forrest know that the treasure chest was still there without him being there. Now, just to kind of give you a teaser, I know for a fact that there is cell service where campsite number nine is. I know that for a fact. It's not spotty, there's cell service there. 
Up at the wheel, it's spotty, but down here, there's cell service all the time. There's also a cow pasture by, by campsite number one where you first come in, and you can see that it's fenced in, and they would bring cattle in there to roam. Well, right next to there, there's kind of like a maintenance building with a bunch of telephone lines and stuff going to it. Um, so this is close enough, let's say within a 1,000 feet, or 1,200 feet of that building. And that's all I want to say at this point. So I'm going to show you guys, depending on how interested you are, um, w what this is all about. I, I, I don't want you to get your hopes up because I really don't think it's, it's anything, but I'm going to put it out there and, and you can decide for yourself. Now, since I mentioned Providence, I just want to show you something else. Kind of what I'm talking about for those of you that don't understand what, what it means. Years ago, uh, Jenny Kyle had a contest on her site, and I just happened to catch it at the, at the exact right time, okay? She posted on there, first person that answers this following question, I'm going to give you a surprise. And what she did is she posted a really tiny image of a, uh, an artwork, and you had to name the artwork. And I caught it as soon as she posted it, and I knew what it was, surprising enough. And I answered it like within probably five minutes of her putting it there. So I won the contest. And ultimately, what she sent me in the mail was this. Um, and I have it. This is a, a picture that I took of it laying on my desk. And um, it's provenance, basically. This box here is actually a medicine box that Forrest Rand put together a bunch of items that he personally dug up at San Lazaro, and he gave it to Jenny, okay? And he wrote her a note to prove the provenance to Jenny of all of these items. Says Jenny, everything in this medicine bundle is from San Lazaro Pueblo. Each item was either man-made, man-used, or man-eaten. Everything is prehistoric and dug by me, Forrest. And there's Forrest Van and Earthquake on that. So, we could tie that to Jenny so we know it came from Forrest, everything in here. And we also got a picture of it, right? So Jenny took that, and then she added her note up here. Hi, right, Troy. Here is also an image and a circle of which item I am giving to you. Thanks and best always, Jenny. And she circled the piece that she gave me and said, I gave you that bone. Okay. And then, of course, I got that bone in a bag, and this is that same bone that she's showing up here. I'm not going to sell this, but if I wanted to on eBay, and I don't believe it's worth that much, it ain't much. It's just a bone. It's not a human bone. It's probably an animal bone. When you look at it up close, it's got teeth marks in it and stuff like that, and it's almost a 1,000 years old. So Forrest Fenn himself dug it up. It's inside of a bag. It was also all wrapped in bubble wrap, and then it was shipped to me by Jenny. So if I wanted to sell it, I could provide this sheet as provenance that shows that it went from Forrest Van to Jenny and then from Jenny to me. So I can prove a paper trail. And that's what, what we mean when we talk about provenance at the auction. Frankly, um, and I think that K-Pro agreed with me, I think it's foolish to bid on items that you don't have any provenance on. Now, I believe that they can easily prove that Forrest Fenn owned those coins, and they're likely to do that. But the problem comes that they can't claim that it's from a treasure chest that Forrest Fenn hid unless they have written documentation to prove that. Because for all we know, Forrest Fenn could have took the items that they're going to sell from his vault, and they were never hidden. So, yeah, they trace back to Forrest. Yeah, the DNA in the jar will trace back the forest. But how do you prove that it was in the chest? Because remember, there's three things going on. You got the intrinsic value of the item. And then you got Forrest Fenn's name on it, which admittedly doesn't really mean that much in the grand scheme of things. I mean, we as searchers put value behind Forrest Fenn's name. But the general public at large doesn't even know who he is. So it's not going to add any value. So if a coin's worth two grand, it's only worth two grand intrinsically. That's it. That's all you're going to get. That's the, the market value. They're not going to care that Boris Van owned it. Okay. 
But if you wanted to really make a lot of money on it, if you could prove that it was in the treasure chest that was actually hidden and there was no fraud, the chest was found legitimately, um, it wasn't pulled by Forrest, because if Forrest friend pulled the treasure chest, right, they still can't claim it was from a hidden treasure because if Forrest friend pulled it, it wasn't hidden. You see how that works? So that would add a lot of value. So if you had a treasure chest, and the uh, item's intrinsic value inside of it was a million dollars. You might be able to get a million and a half or two million dollars if you can tie it to the treasure chest. But if you can't, you're not going to be able to get that. And I think pretty much everybody agrees with that. So I don't believe the auction's going to go live at all. But if it does, I think what's going to happen is no, they're not going to provide any provenance. And that's because, frankly, I think that something is suspect. I don't trust anybody that is in this LLC at all. I think that it might even be possible that Jack never sold the treasure chest. Jack is part of the LLC, and this is his attempt at selling it, okay? So he's making it look like he already sold it and he's out of the picture, but he's not. He really could be part of the LLC, and they're trying to sell it now, and then Jack would get his money, and so would the other people in the LLC. Um but that just seems kind of scammy to me. I mean, it seems like, you know, something that somebody that was a retriever would do and not really a finder. Because like I said, I don't know about you guys, but if I would have found this treasure chest, you would have seen pictures. Now, I'm not necessarily saying I would have showed my face, but I would have had like hundreds of pictures of me physically holding the items in that chest. I would have had them laid out on the, on the, uh, floor in the um in the hotel so i can inventory it I, w- I would have been showing all that stuff because i would have i would have been i would have been thrilled to death right i wouldn't have been able to keep my mouth shut and here we have the exact opposite occurring the only pictures that Forrest friend released were three of them one of them with the chest on the ground okay not buried not the one that you see from the court case Forrest friend was not alive when that came out there's no way to tie that picture to Forrest Fenn because no forensic evidence was provided. They just provided screenshots of an email, which are easily fake. Okay. So we're going to rule that out. We're only going to go by the pictures that Forrest Fenn showed. So we have Forrest Fenn sitting alone in those pictures in the office with the treasure chest with the items laid out on the table. We got two pictures of that. Okay. Obviously, Jack is not. In. Okay. And then we got a picture of it sitting on the ground. And it's not the, like I said, it's not the images from the uh, the McCracken case. Those are not proven. The one with the spider webs, the one with it buried in the ground. Those pictures are kind of interesting because we know, we know for a fact that there are duplicates of that treasure chest. And Rudy, the one who found the log, apparently, he owns one of them and he didn't hide it. He showed videos of him with that chest back in 2018. I believe it's still on his channel. And you'll notice that none of those pictures are close enough shots or they have dirt on them that you can't really see the details could that be on purpose i don't know but like i said all of that's suspect so the problem is you can't prove any of these items were actually hidden in the rocky mountains at best you could prove that they tie back to forest fed but it's interesting that the chest is not being sold i mean i um, Mike asked me in the video last night in the chat, he goes, Troy, you know, Troy, would you buy it? How do you feel about the way it is right now? Because I had told them, and I'm not going to tell you who, who the people are, but I emailed both of those attorneys and I personally don't have the money to bid on it, but I have access to people that definitely have the money. Not only do they have the money, they have uh, more money, far more money than anybody like Justin Posey is going to have. And incident, and, and it was interesting that they never contacted me back. Um, I believe that they made a lot of mistakes in that LLC that makes no sense. You don't judge a book by its cover. They have no idea who I know. And I'm certainly not going to tell anybody who the money would have came from. But if they would have shown interest, I would have put them in touch with the correct people. And um, they blew that. That's never going to happen now. There's just far too suspicious they don't want anything to do with it. So my answer to uh, Mike is that I wouldn't buy anything either. Um, I will may, I mean, 
if the chest was intact, minus the bracelet that Boris Rent took, if everything was in that chest, and I believe it should be, um, then it will be another story. But if they're going to piecemeal it out, that to me, that just totally destroys the value. I would have no interest in it. I, I, I think it should be together. I don't think that it was fair, honestly. And, and believe me, I like the Fenn family. I don't know them personally. I don't think they're involved in fraud. I don't think that Child is involved or Zoe is involved or any of that stuff. But I disagree with the fact that they've taken the dragon bracelet and taken those other items. They did not find the treasure chest. Jack did. They're not entitled to anything in that treasure chest except for the bracelet that Jack gave back to Forrest. I can definitely see that being passed on to his grandson. But the other items in there, no. If they want it, they should buy it from the seller or the finder. They shouldn't be entitled to it. Um, I think that that's wrong. And it, again, it's suspect. I mean, that jar could have been opened. Items could have been taken out of it, put in it, and then it could have been resealed with wax. You don't know what's going on. And if they don't provide any provenance, and I mean real provenance. I'm not talking about a lawyer coming out and saying, oh, yeah, you know, Jack bought that. Because the lawyer that came out and already said that didn't do any due diligence. He didn't provide any proof that what he was saying is true. In fact, the opposite. He said he wasn't involved in any of that sale. So they essentially hired a lawyer that doesn't know anything about the few, the, the history of what they're going to be about to sell. The whole thing just seems too suspect to me. And um, the group of people that, that I had um, that would have been on it are no longer interested. And I don't blame them. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't put my neck out in the line. I mean, they're not like a Justin Posey that nobody ever heard of. And the LLC blew it. They completely blew it. They could have got more money than anything that was offered to them, and they blew it. And and I know, I'm telling you, this is a fact. We emailed both um, Hanskill or whatever his name is, which is Jack's attorney, and we emailed um, Carl Summer and told them that if there is a list of people that are bidding, we are interested in bidding, please get back to me. Carl got back to me enough to know that he received the letter. But nobody said anything about a list. Nobody said anything about any bids coming up. So, but I know I notified them, but nobody said anything back to me. Now, to me, that makes it even more suspect because there is no reason why somebody like that would hide the fact that they're about to have a big auction and try to get as much money as possible for the treasure chest, especially considering that it was originally said that the LLC did this purely as an investment. They have no emotional ties to the treasure chest. So that makes it even make less sense because you would think that they would be uh, excited to try to push them. And, and like even K Pro said, that it just doesn't make sense that Heritage wouldn't be putting this out there earlier. I mean, let's look at the big picture here. We're kind of biased because we're searchers, okay? But if you ask the world at large, who is Forrest Fan? Who is Forrest Fan's treasure hunt? Um, blah, blah, blah. Nobody knows who he is, right? So when you take a company like Heritage that sells artworks and stuff where it's millions and millions of dollars, far more than this treasure chest, there's nothing special about this auction to the population at large. It's only special to the searchers. And that's kind of one other thing that, that annoys me because I, I disagree with Mike that they will be doing this to help the searchers. They're not doing it to help any searchers. They're interested in pure financial gain, right? They're not going to help the searchers. That's not financial gain. And they also common sense that no average searcher is going to be able to bid on anything because they're probably going to use a bunch of shills to drive the price up. And the interesting thing about that, again, is that when you take a real rich person and a real famous person, right, they're going to want to bid on something. They're going to want the whole thing in its entirety. Um, I hate to say it, but I mean, that's the way rich people are, right? They're, 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 they're only concerned with themselves, right? So they would want the treasure chest because it's special, right? But the minute you break it apart, okay, Mike Calazars can go and easily buy one of the double eagles that the rich person bought. So to them, it drastically lowers the value because it's no longer special. There's 265 of them in the box. So what's special about it? When somebody's going to spend millions of dollars, they want something because it's unique. And it's no longer unique. You're not going to buy a, a chunk of gold 
when the other chunks of gold are being bought by other people. So if they would have kept the thing intact and actually had any common sense, and I'm talking about the people that run the LLC now, they would have done things totally differently. So they blew it. And so, yeah, I'm laughing at the LLC right now. You blew it. You blew it. You'll never know what could have been, right? You blew it. You blew it because of the way that you're doing this is all wrong. And like Craig Pro said, I would really suggest that you come up a provenance or call off this auction because you're going to be screwed. You're going to be lucky, in my opinion, to even get a million dollars. Now, that's why I said before, I don't believe Jack sold it. Even if they only get $700,000, they're not really taking a lot. Think about it for a minute. If Jack didn't sell it, they didn't put any money out of their pocket. So even if they only got a half a million dollars, they still profited. You see what I'm saying? Right? But it was still a stupid move because they could have sold the whole chest at once and they could have put it at auction. They didn't have to do private bids. And I can guarantee you that there would have been people that can bid far more than these couple of losers were trying to do behind the scene. And they blew it. They blew it. So anyway, folks, get out and vote today. It's important. Right? I don't give a crap who you're voting for. If you don't vote and exercise your right to do so, you are not entitled to discuss how bad things are or how good things are in the country that we live in. Because if you're not playing your part in voting, you haven't earned the right to do so. So get out and vote today. And I'm definitely going to have fun watching the news tonight as the woke culture is going to freak out. Because in my opinion, there's going to be a huge red wave huge and they're going to be completely destroyed they're going to lose congress okay they're going to lose the senate okay and obviously in 2024 they're going to lose the presidency but anyway get out and vote have a good week and we'll see what happens on friday peace